Hi there! I'm Lilia, and I'm here to tell you how to love old games. Seems like a pretty simple concept, doesn't it? But a lot of people are afraid of old games. I think there is too much hype around new games today, which is obvious. They're new and everyone is excited to play them. There's lots of, you know, money spent on marketing them to everyone for the next new hot thing. But you know what? The next new hot thing only lasts for like five minutes, and then everyone is moving on to the next thing. What if we all took a step back and started enjoying the things that already were good in the past and not even that far in the past, maybe 10 years plus? This seems like a weird topic to make a video on. There's nothing on YouTube that explains this in any way, and it actually is a skill, especially when you try to go back and play the oldest games, of course, but this does apply to any older game, especially if you are someone who is just used to playing new games or who is brand new to gaming in general, and, you know, maybe you want to play some games from your past, but you have no clue how to even, like, get into the mindset to do that. I'm going to help you today. Number one, develop a large fear of missing out. FOMO. This is not a necessary skill by any means, but personally, I fell in love with playing old games and just got into playing old games in the first place because I have a very large fear of missing out. It's just part of my personality. I, I want to play all of the games that I missed out on in the past. I just am that kind of person where I want to experience almost everything or I will feel like I'm missing out on something. So that is my reason for getting into the pursuit of playing lots of old games. That by no means needs to be your reason. It helps a lot in trying to actually get to point A where you wanna start playing old games. It's the mindset of the thing where you're ready to dive in and you just wanna experience any old game. Even if you're not gonna play the entire thing, just dive into it and see what you think. Maybe move on to another one. Don't commit to playing the entire thing right away. Just kind of dip your feet into the shallow end and see what's out there and uh, just get a taste for it. That's what I did. And then it just started wading deeper and deeper and deeper into the pool of old games, of which there are lots of. This pool is very, very deep. <laughs> Be warned. Number two. Start with games that are simple. Try to find games that are not overly complex because if you're just new to playing old games, many of them don't explain the mechanics as thoroughly or, or some of them have some strange and unfamiliar mechanics that you don't understand that could frustrate you if you're new to gaming or you're just new to playing old games. Uh, which could cause a lot of people to be frustrated and quit. So the simpler the game is that you start with, the easier time you're going to have with it, and then you're going to be more likely to pursue another game after it or just to have a good time in general. And it depends on who you are. Some people like more um, difficult games and some people have more patience than others and less patience. And that brings me to number three, level up your patience stat. Every time you play an old game, you will level up your patience stat. I would say at least one point every old game you play. Now, I don't know what level your patience stat started with. Everybody's different, as I said. But I started with a fairly high patience stat. And uh, currently, I'm sitting really, really high. Like, I have completed some games that really did require me to try very hard to, to keep my cool and to just <laughs> get through them. And that doesn't mean I didn't have fun. It just means that sometimes in old games, you really, really have to want to continue them. But maybe that game is great as a whole, so you want to see it through to the end. And you kind of have to, like, break through the ice at certain points in the game. And that happens in a lot of old games, so be ready for that. Number four, keep a very open mind. I guess this is another skill that you could definitely level up. I know a lot of you out there are very open-minded these days, and I think this is a skill that we should just work on as a society of gamers because old games can be very different from new games. The variety in old games is just insane. It will blow your mind at how many different types of old games there are and what the little tiny nuances and differences it are in every single old game that you play because back when old games were made and I'm not putting a date on this I'm trying to keep this very simple okay when older games were created 
the developers didn't have such of a tight rope to walk in the development design. They all, not all of them, but, you know, a majority of them were able to experiment and throw things in there that weren't necessarily like what everyone else was doing. So keep an open mind on that front and just understand that not everything is going to be like everything else. Just have fun with it. Just enjoy it and appreciate it for what it is. Number five is incredibly important. And this tip has gotten me through many, many old games that I probably otherwise would have quit. Use the internet when you're stuck. If you're playing an old game that came out like, you know, 20 plus years ago, there probably is going to be some point in the game where you get horribly stuck because there is lack of direction. There's no quest markers. The journal doesn't tell you where to go. Or maybe it's just a puzzle that's really annoying and doesn't make any sense to you. It could be just a, a factor of the times, or it could just be a really, really convoluted puzzle, or you just don't know how to do it, and that's fine. There is no shame in looking things up. In my opinion, I think it is an incredibly important skill to use when playing old games because there has been so many games that I would have just chucked out the window and gave up on had I not looked up a walkthrough or looked up a YouTube video or just, you know, looked up some general gameplay tips on what to do or what the best thing to do in this game is. Because in my opinion, it's much better to look things up than it is to get frustrated or, you know, bored with it and just stop playing a game that you're actually loving. No shame in looking things up. Remember that. Another important factor, if you're playing a game that has difficulty settings and maybe you're not confident going into it, just play on an easier difficulty. If you think an easier difficulty is going to make you progress in the game, don't feel bad. Sometimes in older games, easy difficulties are still hard. And sometimes in old games, easier difficulties don't really even do much. Use the internet again and look up what the difficulty settings actually do before you decide. But no one is judging you if you plan an easier difficulty in an old game. You're already playing an old game and that's hard in itself. Number seven, use your imagination. Remember when you were a kid and you had great imagination and you could just play with your toys and just imagine this whole world around you that seemed so real. Try to get back to that, but use the game as your anchor. And this is much easier to do in, in games that are newer because the graphics are nicer. But I really want you guys to imagine what it was like, you know, when you were 10, you started getting into video games and you remember what one of them felt like to play and how magical it was. Try to bring yourself back to that point in time and then enjoy your game because it's going to make a huge difference in how much you actually appreciate and can get fully invested into the game that you're looking at. This technically applies to every single game that you could ever play, but it's an important mindset trick to use to sort of get yourself like immersed within the experience of the game. Just try to like let go. Use it as like a meditation almost. <laughs> let go of everything and just try to envelop everything the game is offering around you and really get sucked in without ignoring everything around you in real life. Like don't get that sucked in where you can't hear, you know, the fire alarm going off or something, okay? <laughs> Safety first. Number eight, appreciate the developer's creativity. As I was saying, in number four, developers had a lot more freedom back in the day when they made games. And rather than seeing some of these interesting gameplay mechanics as annoying and sort of in your way, try seeing them as the frontier of gameplay design. This developer was trying something out and they were being creative and they had a reason for designing it this way. Sometimes if it is a really bad thing, it could also be just a limitation of the engine that the game is running on because obviously game engines were not as beefy as they are today. And some things, especially when developers are trying to be really creative and do something very new and you know, kind of extravagant, they did have to make a lot of compromises within the game engine to make certain things happen. And therefore, some things really did not come across very well in the end, or they just don't make much sense. So just try to understand that a little bit and just try to get into the shoes of the developer a little bit and think, oh, maybe they did this because of this or investigate why they might have done it if you can't understand um, or just kind of appreciate it. 
I usually just comment on how annoying something is, but then I try to go back and justify it in some way. Because if something is bugging me, that always makes me feel better <laughs> about the situation. And it keeps me playing the game longer. It's all a mindset shift, really. Number nine, I'm adding in here because I personally think this is incredibly important. Be willing to try new types of games. If you think you just want to go back to play the same type of game you're already playing, maybe like you just want to play old FPS games, I really encourage you that once you do dip your feet into the old FPS games and are okay with those, try some other stuff. Because believe it or not, even if you don't like current games of a different genre, you might resonate more with games of a different era in a different genre because each genre of game has sort of morphed quite a bit <laughs> over time. And so some games might surprise you. Now, after listening to me say all of these things, you might be thinking, well, that's great, Lilia, but how am I supposed to figure out what games to play and how would I even find these games in the first place? I encourage you to watch my videos to get snippets of games that you might want to play. Check out my playlist. And um, if I don't have anything that you want, just search YouTube and find some somebody playing a game that you're interested in. Just look at a very short amount of gameplay footage or a let's play of whatever game you might be interested in and see if it looks fun when somebody else plays it. If you can watch somebody playing this game and it looks like something you could get into, that might mean you could yourself have fun. My goal on this channel is to do this exact thing for you guys. I want to find lots of old games and show them off to you in a way that makes them look fun to play or entertaining. Obviously, some of them won't be great. Some of them will be great. But there's going to be a lot of them that I hope you guys will take on for yourself. So have a peek around the channel and see if anything strikes your fancy. We have all kinds of genres of games, very old stuff and sort of old stuff and sort of newer stuff. So there's just there's stuff for everybody here. And if you're wondering, where the heck do I get these games after I decide which one I play? How do I play them? And if you want the answer to that, you need to watch this video, which I've made going over all of the simplest ways to find and play old games today.